So a challenge was laid down recently at the American Association of Physics Teachers summer meeting to create an interesting rocket animation in vPython. Uh, the speaker was arguing that rockets are better done through uh, spreadsheet calculations. And while I love programming with a spreadsheet, of course, I had to take up the challenge uh, to make something in vPython. Uh, this is the result of what I've made so far today. Let me walk you through where this code come from, comes from and uh, how we know it's working correctly. So we've set up a rocket here as a cylinder. Uh, we're starting it at, at ground level, giving it a color red, because why would you color a rocket anything other than red? Uh, giving it a size, the size doesn't really matter for the physics. Uh, most importantly, we're giving it an initial velocity of zero. We're giving it a mass of 100 and a fuel mass of 10. So that may or may not be terribly realistic for the fuel mass to be 10% of the rocket dry mass, uh, but I'm not worried too much about it being realistic just yet. But basically this mass is the mass of the rocket itself without fuel called the dry mass. This is the fuel mass. So the total mass is going to be the rocket, pla rocket mass plus the rocket fuel mass. Um, and then we go through kind of the usual setup here for the euler crummer method, except that we're using uh, some conservation of momentum instead of some forces. Basically, if you work out the, uh, the math for this, what you end up with is that the change in momentum of the rocket going upward needs to equal the change in momentum of the propellant pointing downward. And the way that works out is we're modifying the rocket velocity by this amount. It's proportional to dm, the amount of rock, uh, excuse me, the amount of fuel mass lost in one time step. Um, and then we have the rocket mass plus the rocket fuel mass, so the total mass that we're trying to move. Obviously this needs to be divided because the more mass there is, the more difficult it is. And then we multiply that by the negative of the exhaust velocity. Negative because the rocket's going to accelerate in the opposite direction of the exhaust velocity. And of course, the greater exhaust velocity we have, the faster the rocket's going. Uh, we calculate the dm over here as m dot times dt. So m dot is the rate of mass loss, uh, rate of mass loss per time. And so dm is the amount of mass lost in time dt. Uh, the reason I have it set up this way is so that I can adjust this dt and this dm will automatically adjust with the size of the dt. Then we do the usual position update here. So the position is updating the same way, but the rocket velocity is updating a little bit differently. Now, so far we are ignoring gravity. We're not putting in any external forces. So that'll be something I add in a future video. Um, and then of course here we have to adjust the rocket's mass. This is not something uh, that we typically have to do. Usually we're working with constant mass systems, but here we're just decreasing the fuel mass by an amount dm, and we uh, then that takes into account up here. I don't have to actually change the rocket.mass proper, proper. I just change this total amount that's in here. And we're gonna have this code run for as long as the fuel mass is greater than zero, because obviously once the fuel mass runs out, the rocket is not gonna be accelerating anymore. It will still continue to move in the real world, but we're not interested in the simulation at that point. Now, if you use some calculus, if you're not familiar with calculus, just uh, you know, plug your ears for this next part, you can calculate what the final velocity of the rocket is supposed to be. It's supposed to be the magnitude of the exhaust velocity times the natural log of the initial mass uh, divided by the final mass. And so here we're comparing the final velocity to this result from the rocket equation. Uh, let's run our code again to see if that works. Here we've got our rocket launching upward. I need to make the rocket a little more visually interesting, give it some fins and a nose cone. I'll do that off camera. Um, and then here we've got our graph of position versus time. You can see it is getting faster because the slope of the line is increasing. And it's so nice to see this in an animation to watch it uh, you know, increase steadily as the code moves forward. And then the thing we're here to check for is whether our final velocity matches the rocket equation. And we get it out to uh, two, let's see, we got to two decimal places, which I'm pretty happy with. Um, and this number will get better if we decrease the time step as usual. So I'm looking forward to this series where we're going to be making some changes to this to answer this challenge. Uh, I think what we'll do today is make an illustration of the fuel mass being depleted. So I think the way that we'll do that is by changing the opacity 
of the rocket. Not something you can do in Excel, I don't think. Uh, what we'll do here is we'll change rocket.opacity to be equal to, let's see, I want it to be like the fraction of the fuel mass that is left. So let's go with uh, rocket.fuel underscore mass, excuse me, divided by, I need to record the initial fuel mass over here. So let's copy this so I don't have to retype the word initial. Initial fuel mass is gonna equal rocket.fuel underscore mass. And so we'll take this, divide it by initial underscore fuel underscore mass. And so now what'll happen as the rocket goes up, it will eventually fade from view as we watch its fuel get depleted so that we can represent that. Now, of course, part of the problem is that we are zooming out automatically. Now you can kind of see it fading away there. Yeah, there we go, it's starting to fade away. Uh, but we can improve that if we tell the camera, I think this is scene.camera to follow oops, the rocket control two. I think this will work. There we go. Now we can follow the rocket. We're still zooming out a bit, but we're at least able to see it there. It's fading out of existence. And so it, as it is depleting its fuel, it is fading out of existence. So there's a nice animation to give you an idea that in order for it to accelerate, the fuel has to go away. I would like it to not. Oh, okay, I can manually zoom in here. So you can see that it becomes dimmer and dimmer as we lose our fuel. So I'll play around with the particulars of that. Uh, next time what we'll do is uh, we'll try adding in some external forces to see how this competes against gravity, which is a little more uh, algebraically intensive. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.